So now we've addressed the fact that Ohio State has created some distance, some more distance between themselves and Penn State. So how did the Nittany Lions respond? What can James Franklin do? Probably not that much in 2024. And honestly, they might be stuck for now. You are locked on Nittany Lions, your daily podcast on the Penn State Nittany Lions, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. That is right. You are locked on Nittany Lions. Thanks so much for making us your first listen. Watch every single day. We are free and available wherever you get your podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network. I'm your host, Zach Seiko, bringing you all things Penn State athletics from football to recruiting, the men's basketball, and so much more. Today's episode is brought to you by Game Time. Download the Game Time app, create an account, and use promo code Locked On for $20 off your purchase. And since this is a recruiting episode, today's episode is also brought to you by LinkedIn Jobs. These days, every new potential hire could feel like a high stakes wager for your small business. That's why LinkedIn Jobs helps you find the right people for your team faster and for free. Post your job for free at linkedin.com slash locked on college terms and conditions apply. It's always great to have him back on the recruiting expert for the Locked On Podcast Network. And that is Brian Smith, also the publisher for All Hurricanes and, and hosts Locked on Florida State, locked on Seminoles. Brian, and thanks again for the time. And before we actually get to recruiting and the and we talk so much about 2024, and now we got to talk about the priority recruits for 2025, but we'll save that for later. I've had some interesting discussions, and people are debating this in the comments section. So I want to continue, I want to bring in a neutral party here to discuss Penn State and keeping up with Ohio State. And I guess we got to throw Oregon into that mix as well, because I do think the rest of the Big Ten has a lot of question marks between Washington, UCLA, USC, et cetera. But I I can sit back and honestly say, and I don't like to admit it, but Penn State has fallen behind Ohio State further because of the change, the Buckeyes, what they've done with the NIL initiatives and the player. I mean, come on, getting Caleb Downs getting Quinshawn Judkins when they did not need those players out of the transfer portal. And then you get some insurance with the likes of Julian Sayan, for example, to go along with the Will Howard. And then you get a former, (laughs) you get a former head coach guy who worked with Tom Brady in Bill O'Brien. So the the question is now, because I thought Penn state did a lot of great things in the off season. You go get an up and coming coordinator in Andy Kotal Nicky. You're able to get Tom Allen, a former head coach, at your defensive coordinator spot. And then you added Nolan Rucci, AJ Harris, Julian Fleming, like Penn State checked a lot of boxes and it's still not enough to close that gap with Ohio State. And now I got to throw Oregon into the mix. So is there anything Penn State can do to keep up with them for 2024? And then I guess we can start talking about a little bit beyond. Well, number one, they've got to do a good job between now and the end of spring and maximizing the roster and probably adding to the roster. Uh, the dirty word here is NIL. Some of the kids that they got, mm-hmm. they wouldn't have got without large up front NIL deals. That's Ohio State. They're, those are your two options in college football right now with certain kids. And there are certain schools that won't do it. Clemson, Notre Dame, Penn State, Michigan. Yeah. Most of them, they, they don't. But that doesn't mean they don't do stuff afterwards. Certain kids want it up front or they're not coming. Yeah. So, you know, I've heard different things about like Caleb Downs and different players, Judkins in particular wanting money, and that's why he's not at Ole Miss. Whatever the case may be, you got to be kind of careful what you do, though, because like Judkins, just as an example, wasn't real well liked in the locker room at Ole Miss, but he is a dude. So yeah, sometimes, <laughs> yeah, yeah, I mean, he's there is no doubt he, he will tote the football and uh, take that contact. So. I don't know if there's anything they can do besides just work their own roster and try to get that one guy, they, especially if they can get a receiver for this next year. But again, as we've talked about many times on this show, why would an elite receiver come to Penn State? They did get the one kid from Ohio State. I mean, but, you know, he's from Pennsylvania. He's had yeah. some injury issues, et cetera. Maybe this is his shot. I don't know. If it's not him and they don't get somebody else, though, why, why would anybody pick Penn State to beat Ohio State? Why would anybody pick Ohio State to compete by any team in the regular season? They should go undefeated. They should. So there's really not a lot of gray area here. It's it's pretty much straightforward. Penn State either has to match almost dollar for dollar what right. Ohio State is doing because 
Ryan Day said, hey, our estimate, if we want to have a competitive roster that goes to the national championship, it's going to take $13 million. Well, the reports come out, the, the rumors surface that Ohio State did, in fact, spend a little over $13 million to construct this roster. And Brian, I think the bigger point is, okay, yes, they got Quinshawn Judkins. Yes, they got Caleb Downs, but those are just a couple of players. It's the fact that they kept in, in a normal cycle, and I brought this up on, on one of my recent episodes as well. They were able to keep JTT, JT Tui Malowau, who is a first-round pick. Emeka Abuka, who's a day-two pick. Travion Henderson, who's a day-two pick, going into the 2024 NFL draft. And they gave up a chance one, one year sooner in the NFL to come back to Ohio State. And NFL contracts are still at... If you're a first round pick, you are making millions more than by coming back to college. So I guess it is. I guess it is that much better. It's all that sweet with the NIL deals in Columbus. I I would assume that and I don't I haven't heard anything like what Travion got, for instance, the running back mm-hmm. that's so fast. I don't know what they gave them, but at the same time, I'm gonna guess they're treated well there and they like Ohio State for one, regardless of the money. But it they had to have given them a really good opportunity. I mean, it had to have been over the top yeah. or else if I'm like their parent or their advisor, I'd be like, why would you stay? Start your you career. Go, the- go get your job. <laughs> yeah, that's, right. that's how I would look at it. Exactly. So that is an extreme case. Not that other schools don't do it to a certain degree, but let's be really honest. This is a, a very awkward situation. They're, they don't want to fire Ryan Day because they don't know who the heck they do hire, but their mm-hmm. fan base is angry that Michigan just won the title. This is a one-off situation. Let's be honest about that. They're not. I don't think that's going to happen every year. And like Michigan's going to struggle next season. There's there's yep. very little chance they're going to beat Ohio State or relevant. That, right. Yeah, you know they might get beat by twenty. It's just that roster now with Harbaugh going to the Chargers. They're about to see what the Pandora's box of everybody coming in and shuffling through your roster is all about. Mm-hmm. But the Big Ten is down. It's on Ryan Day and all them to get it done and. Pretty much Oregon and Penn State are the only two schools, barring something that you and I don't see because we were talking about it before the show. So they went all in to get in one of those top two or three spots in the playoffs and go from there. Texas, Georgia, and Ohio State should have the three best rosters next year based on everything that's gone on. But uh, I, I still need to see it from them. Penn State and some other schools, I just think they got to have a special game and maybe have a special player do something. It's not like Penn State's offensive line and running backs aren't really talented. Yeah. But outside of that, I, again, I still think Penn State's not going to beat Ohio State. So from your point, and, and I guess Penn State has the benefit of actually hosting Ohio State in Beaver That's State big. this time around. That helps, but it obviously didn't help enough when they were playing Michigan. And they were, I I compare this game in the early part of November for 2024, the the season is this is comparable to now welcoming this Michigan team back because it is a national title contender. And you're most likely now going to be the underdog. I, I mean, again, in a normal cycle, Michigan and Ohio State take a significant step back because they should have lost Marvin Harrison Jr., and so many more other players, but because of the uncapped, unregulated, I guess, I, I don't know what I want to call them because they're not rules, but the un, the unregulated part of what you can do with NIL and basically free agency, that's what it is. It's free agency. You can, you can fix your roster overnight now in college football, whereas if you had a coach, you had to wait three or four years to get it reconstructed again. Yeah, when I was growing up, if you had a major loss to the NFL that was unexpected, mm-hmm. that next season wasn't going to be one you were going to be competing for the title. It's pretty cut and dry. Now, they obviously ponied up to keep some guys around. Uh, Judkins comes on board. They get a good quarterback, and you know Will Harris from Kansas State. That was a great job by them, money or not. They still had to recruit mm-hmm. those guys and try to find the fit, and I'm yeah. still not convinced the fit will work. That's part of the – the iffy part with NIL. Let's see how their roster gets along with all that going on. Uh, ask ask some other schools like AM how well that worked out. But I don't know what else you can do if you're Penn State. Either you buy into that philosophy or, if you, or you don't. I'm guessing that Franklin doesn't like it because they've been this way for a while. And yeah. like Sweeney's that way, Kirby's that way, and so was Nick. I mean, most of the really yeah. elite programs don't do it in that manner, but 
the ones I just mentioned are right in the belt with all the high school recruits are too. It's a little easier to be that way there. So I don't know. There's a couple of ways to look at that. Um, if you're Penn state though, if it's not this year, and again, Ohio state, this could be a rare roster, even by their standards, they yeah. need to find a way to beat Ohio state in the next couple of years. Yeah. I, I, I just, I don't know what else to say because at some point you're just always nine and three, you or whatever, 10 and mm -hmm. two, you, <laughs> I, I, I don't know. Cause Franklin, he applies himself, his coaching staff does, but they, they don't even yeah. come close in these games. They just don't. So I, I don't know what else to really say. They got to fix it because it's, it's so predictable what's going to happen in the games to otherwise prove. Well, and that's, that's the even worse part of it, right? Is that Penn state, had the opportunities outside of 2016 because they should have won in 2017. They were up by how many points? 17 up uh, against Ohio State going at 10 in the fourth quarter, and, and they lost that game on the road. Then in 2018, the, the fourth and five debacle, and they should have won that game, and then Ohio State obviously pulled away in 2019, 2020, 2021, but they should have had, they should have had a three-game winning streak going on, and that really would have done – wonders for recruiting and Penn State oh, would have yeah. had something else to back up its message as you said it's just just win the games and, and that fixes a lot of things but I do want to discuss that because you said James Franklin and Penn State don't want to do some of the other the I guess the shady things that other NIL collectives are doing with the upfront money and, and then there's Bill O'Brien <laughs> factor, factored in so let's discuss that on the other side of this break here on Locked On Nittany Lions. Today's episode is brought to you by Game Time. You got to download the Game Time app because buying tickets to your favorite events should not be stressful. And now Game Time wants to take that hassle away when you buy tickets to the big game. That's right. Game Time is the fast and easy way to buy tickets to all of your favorite sports, music, comedy, and theater events near you. But right now, all users get $100 off big game tickets when you use code Vegas 100. That's right. When you buy a ticket to the big game through game time and use code Vegas 100, you get $100 off with killer last minute deals, all in prices, views from your seats and the best price guaranteed game time takes out the guesswork of buying tickets. I've used game time myself and I've had those discounts. I've seen the flash deals. So you get those last minute tick out tickets, but extra deals on those tickets. And then there's no second guessing truly. You can look at and see accurate views of where you would be sitting from the venue. So you're not second guessing yourself or wondering, am I picking the right seats? Game time as the accurate picture for each and every venue. But take the guesswork of out of buying tickets with game time. Right now, all game time users get $100 off a big game ticket with code Vegas100. That is Vegas100. Terms apply. All you got to do is just download the game time app. Use the code Vegas100, B-E-G-A-S-100 for $100 off a big game ticket. Or if you're not going to the game, use code LOCKEDON for $20 off your first purchase. Download game time today. Last minute tickets, lowest price, guaranteed. Today's episode is also brought to you by LinkedIn Jobs. These days, every new potential hire can feel like a high stakes wager for your small business. You want to be 100% certain that you have access to the best qualified candidates available. That's why you got to check out LinkedIn Jobs. LinkedIn Jobs helps you find the right people for your team faster and for free. It is easy to create a free job post on LinkedIn Jobs, then add your job in the purple hiring frame to your LinkedIn profile to spread the word that you are hiring. Simple tools like screening questions make it easy to focus on candidates with just the right skills, just the right experience, so you can quickly prioritize who you'd like to interview and then hire. It's why small businesses rate LinkedIn Jobs number one in delivering quality hires versus the leading competitors. LinkedIn Jobs helps you find the qualified candidates you want to talk to faster. Post your job for free at linkedin.com slash locked on college. That is linkedin.com slash locked on college to post your job for free. Terms and conditions apply. And the Locked On Podcast Network is making history. Locked On has launched the first ever national sports 24-7 streaming channel on YouTube. Locked On Sports Today is here for you 24-7 covering the top sports stories of the day with the local experts of Locked On, plus the national shows covering each and every league. Go to Locked On Sports Today on YouTube and subscribe to the first ever national sports 24-7 streaming channel. Still to come, we're going to talk about 2025 priority recruits. But Brian and I are going to try to put a lid on this 
as far as Penn State, are they still always going to be chasing Ohio State, chasing Oregon in this case for 2024? Because now Bill O'Brien comes in, and I, I think that's a really good move. People are talking a lot of trash about what Bill O'Brien is, but I guess this is a little more, this hits close to home because Bill O'Brien and what he did in 2012 and 2013 really was the glue that held Penn State's program together over the past decade. You don't get a Big Ten championship. You don't go 10-2 and two and get all these New Year's Six Bowls, and James Franklin doesn't have the success that he has without Bill O'Brien and coming together and just kind of putting out fires uh, in, in a sense. And now he's over at Ohio State. This is a head coach. He's worked with Tom Brady. He's worked. He's been on Super Bowl rosters. He now worked with Nick Saban most recently, and he doesn't have to do any of these CEO stuff. He can truly just coach college football. So I know that he didn't do well with Mac Jones and the Patriots. But that roster for New England was abysmal this past season. So he's going to inherit an elite roster at the college level and, and probably do really well with it. And I, I'm not trying to say that he's better or not better than Andy Nicky, But again, in a year where Ohio State should naturally take a step back, they did all the right things to keep them ahead and distance that gap from Penn State. So what are your thoughts on, on Bill O'Brien? Am I giving him too much credit here? Uh, or was that an A-plus hire from your point of view? I don't know if it's an A-plus hire because I've heard he's not the easiest guy to be around and work with. Mm -hmm. But okay. that's probably the same thing with like Munkin. And now the Ravens are the number one seed in the AFC. So uh, Monk is probably the best coordinator in football, period. I I think it'll help because at least Ryan Day will be kicking ideas off of him and back and forth. Yeah. Of course, the question is, can they get along? Guys that have been in control usually don't give it up very well. And Ryan Day is the head coach and a play caller. So I don't know how that's going to work. I don't really care what O'Brien's title is, whether it's coordinator, back office guy, or whatever. He's always going to see himself as the play caller. As, as the lead guy. Yeah. Yeah. It's just so if he's working with quarterbacks and whatnot and, and giving experience, helping with the broader sense of the offense and everything, that alone mm -hmm. is a valuable tool. He's coached with multiple NFL teams. Mm -hmm. He's been at Alabama. He's been at Penn State. That's a valuable resource. It's just the ego part. That's the only question I have. But at the same time, if he took that gig, maybe he's just interested in college more than he thought and wanted mm -hmm. something a little more lax because maybe he doesn't have to do as much with Ryan there. It'd be a pretty cozy job from that perspective. So I don't know. I mean, it, coaching the roster at, at Ohio State, if you're an offensive coach, probably attractive, I would imagine. <laughs> well, that's just it. I, I posed this question a couple episodes back is what's the play here? Why does – because I was always under the impression, and this was back in 2012 and 2013, that Bill O'Brien did not like college uh, coaching at the college level because of all the other, it wasn't just about football, it's all the extracurricular stuff. And then now you have NIL. Now you have the transfer portal. Right. So what's the lure, unless you're using this as what, a stepping stone back into the NFL? Because I know you, basically, if New England had offered him the head coaching job instead of Gerard Mayo, he takes that, obviously. I don't think he wanted to follow Bill Belichick wherever he's going to end up, the Falcons or, or whatnot. But what's, and then there's the rumor, there's the speculation that Ryan Day moves on to the NFL eventually. And then Bill O'Brien's the head coach in waiting at Ohio State. I mean, that's just, is that crazy message board stuff or is there legit, is there, there's fire here, there's smoke here. So that means there's fire. Well, I mean, Ohio State fans, in my opinion, are the craziest fans in college football, so I don't pay much attention to their opinions about stuff. But that being stated, nothing would shock me. Uh, Ryan Day, the way he coaches, fits the NFL mm -hmm. well, so if he took off, it wouldn't okay. be shocking. I highly doubt Bill O'Brien would be the first call. I'm guessing Luke Fickle would be, but that's okay. just my opinion. You know, he's, he, he played at Ohio State. Marcus been successful. Freeman. Freeman – he, he'd be the next, but he hasn't coached very long yet. It'd be a little right. more of a risk, I think. But he's a hell of a recruiter. He's, you know, he's very well liked. But, yeah, Bill O'Brien, I don't know. Um, I don't know how well Ohio State boosters would deal with him. That would be the other thing. He's not the easiest guy from everything I've heard. So be careful for what one wishes. So then I, I just have to go back to the NIL and Penn State. It, it is it, – it's pretty straightforward. 
if you want a roster, if you want a top tier roster in this age of college football right now in 2024, and it's probably not going to change in 2025, 2026, because this is going to go to the courts. This is going to go to legislation. If the NCAA tries to make a move to say, hey, there's going to be a salary cap of some sort, or the TV networks negotiate some sort of ad revenue sharing process or whatever, there's people that are going to sue and say, no, we, we like being able to throw whatever money from the collective and do whatever we want. And they're not going to like that that's taken away from them. In, in Penn State's case, there's the whole, because Brian, you mentioned it. Oh, James Franklin doesn't like doing that. I, I don't want to say whether or not he specifically likes or doesn't like doing it. I think he's an honorable guy. He was down at again, Vanderbilt's a program that's not going to have an NIL slush fund and Penn State certainly isn't either. But there's the whole success with honor mantra. A lot of fans simply don't donate, even though they're, you know, yes, I support Penn State football to the fullest. I'll buy tickets and everything else, but I am not paying players. I am not donating to the collective simply because Joe Paterno wouldn't want that. And this is not the college football, the version of college football that I grew up with. So it's the whole idea around Penn State that that Penn State wants to do everything, be successful with this idea of honor. So yes, because it is. I that's why I say shadiness. That's why I say words like sliminess because it is. You are doing pay. You it is truly a pay for play. Who can go to the highest bidder? Because I, Brian, I, I imagine if pro teams were doing this, NFL teams were doing this. Oh, in order for Patrick Mahomes to stay in Kansas City, the fans have to pony up more money. The fans already pony up thousands, millions of dollars through merchandise, tickets, parking, and everything else. And now the fans need to front the bill for keeping your favorite, your your favorite college player at, at your at your school, your alma mater. And it is the strangest, most ludicrous idea to me that fans basically have to front that one to two million dollar bill. Well, I don't know if there's going to be legislation that ends it in any time soon because it's an election year and there's a lot of people trying to be nice to the college kids right now because they just want them to vote for them. Let's, yeah. let's cut that real short. That, that That's pretty obvious with this because those people do not care for the most part about college football at all. No. Um, it's, it's ironic, but there's no good way for this to end because I understand players wanting to get money and, you know, be compensated. Mm -hmm. that, that doesn't bother me at all, but the roster's changing. There cannot be an open transfer in college football to be good. Yeah. There's just not. NIL isn't the biggest problem. Uh, that's the ex auxiliary to me because mm -hmm. if you don't have a penalty for transferring, then people use NIL to induce you when you weren't even yeah. thinking about transferring. There is the real crux. And until somebody gets hammered, and I mean dropped the hammer, bull ban, millions of dollars, the whole nine yards, which the NCAA scared to death because they were a toothless animal, I don't know what you can do um, as it relates to Penn state. I I'm sure there are some players that have special in ideal NIL deals. If they've earned after they've been on campus and stuff like that. And that's all well and good. Yep. But these guys, and I'm just, just going by what people have told me uh, straight up like recruits, et cetera. It is about upfront because they're, you know, you can get hurt in your first practice and they're right. I, I there's no fixing the problem. So either you jump in on it or you don't. Yeah, you don't don't hate the player in this case. I, I don't think anybody should be upset at Penn State. I don't even think people should be upset with schools like Texas, Miami. They're all playing the game the way that right now it's unfortunately meant to be played. So we'll, we'll finish here with the idea of keeping up with Ohio State. And, and I know we didn't talk specifically enough about Oregon, but I don't want to leave them out as this entity because they are going to be one of the top five schools going into the college football playoff, at least projected anyway for the 2024 season. But now there's the spring football portal window where players that didn't like where they were on the depth chart. We saw that with storm duck, for example, who came to happy Valley and left as quickly as he showed up on campus that Penn state could still build the roster a little better to compete with Ohio state. But so can the Buckeyes, because like I said, Penn state made all the necessary moves to close the gap. But then Ohio state said, Hey, watch this. Hold my beer. <laughs> and they went and got the players that they did. So despite all that, I, is there what's the hope with what we discussed here for the past 20 minutes saying that Penn State 
is not going to change its NIL philosophy. There's not going to be any rules or leg, uh, legislation, regulations put in place to change any of this. So I imagine it's going to be a lot of the status quo. Penn State might pick up a player or two, but if they don't want to change the NIL approach, there is no closing the gap for the time being with Ohio State and Oregon going into 2024. Is that That's probably the correct thing to say here. Yeah, I think it's those two and everybody else. Uh, Penn State should be the third team, and they might be a playoff team. It's possible. Yeah. But they might lose both those games if they play those two. Well, they don't play Oregon, Oregon but they, they – but... I mean, they they might go 11-1, and one, but they might lose 31-10 to 10 to Ohio State. You know what I mean? It's just – Ohio State should be way better than just about everybody not named Texas – or Georgia. Those are the only two teams I think. I, I think Oregon's good, but I don't think they have the same okay. coaching. That that's I think they're the fourth team. I think there's a gap. But they would still be a more talented roster than Penn State next year. Yeah. So if Penn State somehow beat Ohio State, they would still have to play them in the conference championship. championship. Yep. Yeah. So I mean that's a that's a grinder. That is a grinder. Um it is what it is, man. You're only going to be able to do so much. I think the bigger thing for Penn State is get Drew Hour actually throwing the ball, have an exciting offense this year. And next year during the December portal window, you're going to pick up a receiver again. you got to get a big-time receiver pretty much every year now. It's the new most important position in football other than quarterback. If you don't have a down-the-field threat that the other team knows they can't beat one-on-one, -on -one, you're not going to be competing for a title. That's about as simple as it gets. Right now, Penn State doesn't fit that mantra very well. And 95% of the schools don't. But uh, even Georgia, I mean, they used a tight end to do it. It was really weird, but nobody could guard Brock Bowers uh, yeah. at all. And I don't think anybody's going to guard him at the NFL level either. you got to have somebody like that as the difference makes. They need to get that guy, whether it's developed through the roster, transfer portal, or recruiting this class, whatever. They need a difference maker. So maybe in 25 they can be that team because Auer would be a senior. 25 should be the year Penn State does something, hmm. in my opinion, like beat Ohio State. We'll see. Anything they get this upcoming season to me is a bonus. Well, we've brought up Oregon, at least named them a lot. Well, the head coach, Dan Lanning, says you got to win the transfer portal. Forget high school recruiting. It's all about the transfer portal. But Penn State is still heavily involved in high school football recruiting. So who are the priority recruits with upcoming junior days for the 2025 class? Brian and I will discuss at the other on the other side of this break. And today's episode is brought to you by FanDuel, the official sports book of Locked On. The NFL regular season has wrapped up, but now they're in the thick of the playoffs with the championship games, and there's still time to get in on the action with FanDuel, America's number one sports book. And right now, new customers can get $150 in bonus bets, guaranteed. When you place a $5 bet, it's that easy. It's that simple. That's $150 in bonus bets, win or lose. The app is super easy to use. I use it myself, and there are so many different ways to bet, like live same-game parlays. You can find bets in the all-new Explore tab. Make a parlay in the Parlay Hub the best way to find popular parlays. So the bets are already made for you right there, and there's so much more. All you got to do is visit FanDuel.com slash locked on and make your first bet a layup. That's FanDuel.com slash locked on to get started. FanDuel, official partner of the NFL. And remember, if you're not already, become an everydayer. Subscribe to Locked On In Lines on YouTube and wherever you get your podcasts. If you want to keep up with Brian's work, you can subscribe to Locked On Florida State, Locked On Seminoles, and keep up with recruiting as well and what teams in Florida are doing. Brian, in this final segment, Penn State, again, unlike Oregon, focuses on high school football recruiting. They say James Franklin has admitted that that's the foundation. That's how they want to build, stack classes, and then get compliments out of the transfer portal but right now, what we're seeing, the results don't match up with the data. So as Penn State, Penn State seems for now, they're going to continue with just this. And it's not going so good for the class of 2025 just as of late. I, I know they picked up some commitments in there. They get, you know, a, a raw prospect at offensive tackle. They get a diamond in the rough that I would say with, with cornerback. And then they've kept up with the, the linebacker and everything else and ju the junior upcoming junior days are important we're going to discuss some of those priority recruits but I, I can't help but start with the fact that they've lost out on now two priority defensive ends Ari Watford most recently to Clemson who we named as not so big of a, an NIL player but he's all in he's locked into the Tigers and Dabo Sweeney 
And then the one that probably stings a little more is that here Mathis because he is in the state of Pennsylvania. But Ari Watford and Mathis were definitely Penn State's top two on their big board for the class of 2025. I got to imagine you got to be concerned about that. And just when I got finished a couple weeks ago saying how great Deion Barnes was and how good of a recruiter and one of the better defensive line <laughs> coaches and in, in the nation, and now you go 0 for 2 on your biggest priority recruits. Sometimes it just doesn't work out, man. It's not like Ohio State, Clemson, Alabama, whatever the schools aren't going to recruit these kids to. But that does hurt, especially, you know, say you're being a Philadelphia kid. Um, look, there's still a long way to go, and there are other defensive ends. But if there's one thing I'm not worried about with the entire Penn State staff is they're going to grind, and they'll stay after those kids. I'll be surprised if at least one, if not both of them, don't make visits to Happy Valley between now and the end of the summer. That's just kind of the nature of the beast in this era anyway, and Penn State, again, does a good job with it. Uh, the bigger question for me is still receiver, and then on the other side of it, can they get guys like Trent Wilson, the guy you and I were talking about? Mm -hmm. He's from the, the greater uh, Baltimore, D.C. area, defensive lineman that everybody wants. There's still plenty of chances. They have to hit on some of these guys, though, because a guy like Wilson, for instance, if he goes to Ohio State, too, and they're definitely one of the schools that have offered – then you're not just losing the kid, you're losing him to your rifle. So yeah. it, it's it's not one or the other, man. It's when you lose it to your rifle, it just stinks a lot. Yeah. So I, I would imagine that Penn State fans are upset, but you're just not going to win every battle. Let's yeah. see who else they go out and get. You know, last year they got some kids out of Florida that nobody thought they were going to get. So sometimes you win, sometimes you lose. Yeah, and Penn State is and now they do. Now, this is what's important. You got to make up for this. So you mentioned. Trent Wilson, who already visited for a previous junior day, and you got two more upcoming. And there's dozens of kids that are scheduled to visit. A couple of ones that are already committed to 2025. But this time around, a lot of wide receivers. So, Brian, this is good. And then some some interesting names, of course. I would say Michael Carroll is one that, and, and probably Penn State. And I want to say that's a Penn State lean. I want to say that's one that's not a Penn State lock, but he is a legacy very talented in-state offensive lineman who could probably vault his way up into being one of the, if not the top, definitely I would say top three in terms of interior offensive linemen. But I, just to name a few of them, right? And I'll, I'll go down the list here. There's Hayden Bradley, who's a tight end, Rowan Byrne to go along with Carroll at offensive line. And then everyone's probably like, well, what about the wide receivers? You said the, the wide receivers. There's Desi Jones out in the New Jersey area, Darian Williams out of New York, and Taz Williams, I've heard of that name, out of Texas as well. So, Brian, when you look at this list for the upcoming junior days that Penn State is hosting, are there any other names that stand out to you or the ones that I named, the, the priority recruits for Penn State? And then I want to ask about one other Florida prospect because I thought it was interesting that he visited the last junior day. But out of this list for the next two, who do you like the most for Penn State? Uh, Jadon Blair is a kid from Winston-Salem, North Carolina. That's a, a hybrid safety that's real long and athletic. Okay. He's a kind of the kid that every team wants. He could play the nickel. He could play Will. He could play strong safety. I'm mm -hmm. a big fan of, of Burn, the, the offensive lineman out of New Rochelle in New York. Uh, they have a lot of kids in the New Jersey, New York area that they have to start with. That's the same thing that Joe Paul would have done. Obviously, very successful coach, so that's a big deal to me. <laughs> they also have – a kid like Ezekiel Marcellin, he's out of Central High School. It's a kid I, I'm familiar with down in Miami. If you're going to continue to recruit that state, you might as well go after the best players. And Miami Central certainly has a lot of them. I mean, a lot of the kids I'm not as familiar with from the Northeast, but I know that I'm looking at these high schools and I'm like, DePaul Catholic. That's not really surprising. Christian Brothers Academy in Syracuse. They're hitting the right spots. It's more about getting the kids there and it'll kind of fill itself out from there. So – I think Penn State will be fine. Now the question is how many of them from out of state, especially kids from Georgia, Florida, wherever, have a true interest after you get them on campus at Penn State. And, and that's why you do this. And Penn State changed its coordinators. You have to meet Andy Kotelnicki. You have oh, yeah. to get Tom Allen. You have to get them to meet Tom Allen. Yeah. So I think this is more about new introductions and, and get it like, hey, you knew Manny Diaz. That's who started to recruit you. But now – you got to talk to Tom Allen in this case. And while well, we fired Mike Yersich, but Andy Kotelnicki is supposed to be better. So I hope that's the, 
what what exactly when you have these junior days is the pitch because this is still very this is still an introductory process i know that some kids have already committed i know that messiah mickens has committed for the class of 2026 but what what kind of is the idea behind these conversations right now for penn state it's about meet and greet building relationships okay it's not just across the board Every kid is different. Every family is different. Every high school coach that they bring with them or don't that helps set it up is different. How do you coordinate to each individual that's involved in every process? It is a lot, especially with those out-of-state kids. You get one shot to get them on a campus visit like this. It's unofficial on their dime. It's got to be dead on perfect. Yeah. So that's what it's about. It Make them feel comfortable that you went out of your way for their kid, for their for their prospect, if it's a high school coach or whatever the person is that's with them, then you got a shot. And then on the back end, it's it's the constant communication. Penn State's been great with that for years. I would expect that to continue. But this weekend is really important to build bonds, especially with the out-of-region out of kids. Last player I want to name. He visited last week, talked about him extensively on some previous recruiting podcasts, and that's Elijah Melendez. He's listed as a, a five-star in some places, definitely a high-end four-star linebacker. Committed to Miami of Florida, so publisher for all Hurricanes, you know this player very well, and being down yeah. in the southeastern part of the country, I imagine you've seen him multiple times play, <laughs> yeah. but he may, he may com he comes all the way up to Penn State to visit for the first junior day, so I gotta imagine that means something in this case, but Manny Diaz was recruiting him, so how interested would he be, and now Tom Allen's gotta take over here, so does Penn State have any chance at landing a linebacker like this when all the way down in Florida, you change defensive coordinator, linebacker coaches, because Diaz takes the, the Duke job here. But Melendez still makes an effort to come see Penn State at the first available weekend. Well, he's originally from Colorado, and he moved to Florida before his sophomore year. So he's not a true Floridian. Uh, yeah. He's a real smart kid. I've been around him. He, he's built like a boxer. I mean, he has no body fat. He's put together. I mean, he has every offer. So yeah. for him to go up to Penn State, there just has to be sincere interest. Penn State, like I've said many times, they do a great job with communication and getting after these kids. If they're getting him on campus, they're doing something right. Because I can tell you right now, Miami staff is elite at recruiting. They don't miss. Uh, Derek Nicholson, their linebacker coach, is tremendous. I'd be surprised if Penn State hasn't pushed all the right buttons for him to come up. This is not potluck here. Penn State's doing their due diligence. And that'll conclude this one. Another edition of Locked on Nittany Lions in the book. I appreciate the time, Brian. Always the, the perspective and the honesty. It's good to get you as a neutral party, like I said earlier in the show, to talk about. It's like, you know, well, for the Penn State perspective, it's all well and great, but to give an actual reality gut check of where Penn State stands in comparison to the likes of Ohio State and so many others. So thank you again for the time as always and looking forward to it when we get to do it next. All right. I appreciate it. Take care.